All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews. And this video is a profile of my favorite shoujo horror mangaka from the 1990s, Kanda Mori. So Kanda Mori became famous in the early 90s when he was releasing through Horror M, the monthly horror magazine that ran from 1994 to 2010. It was really popular. It had all of the major horror mangaka of the time in it and then subsequently he went on to release seven tonkobon and he was also featured in a bunch of uh, anthologies which i have a couple i'll show you here in a bit i have been able to track down four of his tonkobon which are extremely hard to find uh once in a while i'll run into uh shoujo dome or the Girls' Alliance, but it's so expensive, and it really is hard to find, so I hope to get that one one day. But I think through these four Tonkobon and a couple anthologies I have, you'll get a good idea of what a psycho Kanda Mori is. Um, one reason why I like him a lot is because, remember, in the 1990s, there was a huge horror boom in Japan, which by the late 90s and early 2000s spread all around the world. Um, you have the greats like Hino Hideshi, who did like real grimy, pussy, bloody body horror stuff. Then you had Inuki Kaneko, who was doing more traditional shoujo horror set around schoolgirls and their kind of like typical kinds of things that they got involved in and troubles that they had, mixed with, of course, supernatural and all kinds of other elements. You had Umez, who is one of the famous horror mangaka, but he would also mix in science fiction or supernatural elements into his stories. And then you had a whole bunch of other people like Ochazuke Nori, who featured schoolgirls or adults, but his artwork style was much different from everyone else's. It wasn't very shoujo at all. It lacked those kind of big eyes and kind of cartoony features that uh, you see with a lot of the other shoujo horror mangaka. But Kanda Mori, when he came around on the scene in 93, 94, around there, he mixed all of these elements together, threw some gags in there, and made some extreme, what we classify here in Japan as splatter shoujo horror. So it's really fun stuff. Um, yeah, let's take a look at, rather than me trying to introduce him, actually in this anthology... Uh, the Horror Specialist 1, and we also have 3 over here. Uh, it has a little bit of a profile of him. So, here's his profile. That art works wild. I'll show you a little bit of the art in a second. And then it's got a comment by him. This one is called Noroi, or Curse. So, this part here talks about what he thinks is a Noroi, or a Curse. But, he was born in December. He's from Hokkaido. He's a Sagittarius. He's a Venetian. He claims he's from Venus. Um, his debut was Black Coffee in Bed, which I've looked everywhere for and I cannot track down for the life of me. He says his next horror he wants to do is on the theme of how to raise hamsters. His personality is criminal. His shumi or his hobby is techno, 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 which we'll get into it here in a second. And uh, his comment is, he once won an honorary award as a newcomer. I'm imagining newcomer mangaka. He's like, isn't that awesome? Then down here, uh, what he comments on regarding curses or norois is that he doesn't believe in ghosts. He doesn't believe in UFOs, the occult, or fortune tellers. But he was reading a book on UFOs. Um, remember, this came out in 1997. So it was just before the millennium when some people thought that the end of the world was coming. He's like, I read this book on UFOs. The end of the world is coming in 2000. Human race is going to be extinct. Aliens are going to come save the believers and take them away to be saved. And everyone else is going to die. And then he, he goes on to uh, 
that kind of reminds me of that Heaven's Gate cult from 1997, around the same time. Remember, they um, did a mass suicide so that they could ride the hale bop comet off and become international, uh, uh, come alien beings or something like that. I think some of the dudes cut off their junk and stuff. I don't know. It was a wild story. Heaven's Gate. Wiki that. And uh, so I think he's. it's kind of a twist on that. But then here at the end, he says the real curse is terrorism and cults like the Om and Asahara. And that the real thing that we must fight against or be worried about is a sarin attack or other kind of attack from a cult or a terrorist group. So that is a short intro to him. Um, the story we have here is Goldfinger. I'm not going to go through every page of it, but this is Goldfinger. He's like a Scrooge McDuck type character hoarding money. Um, a lady comes in for a loan. Because her baby's sick. But instead of helping the baby, he takes it into the other room and harvests its organs. So you see the splatter, you see the gag. Goldfinger comes home to find out he's been robbed of all of his money. It makes him have a brain embolism and his head pretty much starts shooting blood out of it. Which is pretty wild. There's his spirit. And then that spirit goes on to curse our protagonist here, Zeniko. Zeni means coins. So you can see this is pretty gaggy, a lot of gags in here. Gags with the, her friend's name, I believe, is Kaneko, which means money, could be interpreted as money girl. Anyways, this girl at school owes her some money. She doesn't have it, so she scalps her. That's always fun. This is a dude at school. He gets messed up. Everyone gets their legs chopped off in this. Oh, there's some. Her classmate. She chops off her classmate's legs. She will not be stopped. But one more scene here. After she kills them, she stuffs them full of coins and turns them into piggy banks. Ugh. And then, of course, there's got to be a gag at the end. Goldfinger comes back and she says, thank you, Goldfinger, for all of your help. All right. And then we have the Horror Specialist 3. So the profile is the same. But here, this one's called Ayashi, or Suspicious. So they ask him, what does he think is something that's suspicious? And sometimes in Japan, in front of the stations, you'll see MPOs or NGOs collecting money like, you know, UNICEF or the Red Cross or something. And he's like, those people could be in gangs or they could be in cults. Again, talking about cults. He's obsessed with cults. He's like, and if they're in a cult, they're not going to tell you whether they're in a cult or not. So as a Venetian, someone from Venus, I generally don't give money to anyone, which is probably just because being a mangaka is very tough. Not high pay for most of them. And uh, then he goes on just to say that if he was going to give money to anyone, it would be Akai Hana, which is kind of like the National Red Cross here in Japan. Um, but not to trust people asking for money in front of stations because they might be in a cult. They are suspicious. This story is about the robot spider. So... There's some nerd wells at school. They are teasing this poor girl because she's poor. Shove a spider in her eye. It's always fun. They make her put a spider in her own eye, actually. Um, we're not, we won't go through all of it. She's dirt poor. You can see some more gags here. She only has a cardboard box for a table, a candle. She has to shit in the corner. <laughs> she's going to kill herself. And then... Skip ahead, she goes on to go to the spider mansion to kill herself. This is where she's going to do herself in because she can't bring herself to slit her own wrists. Or maybe she's going to do it in the mansion. And while there, the Nerdwells show up. The ruffians named Hip and Hop. And then I think that girl is the, the leader of the gang. 
The girls are always the badasses in these stories. And a giant spider comes out and takes one of the dudes away. I think that's Hip. So Splatter. Inside the spider castle, which was actually a mad scientist who has died, but he had made a giant robot spider kind of thing. There we go. Wild. And then this spider girl in the castle turns into a spider, rips off our protagonist's face. Well, just half of it, but she's not having that. Oh, yeah, and it also kills a uh, hop here of hip and hop. Dismembers him. Then she comes and chops the head off the spider. The spider bites her in the foot, so she crushes its head. She thinks all is good, but of course that bite turned her into a spider girl. When Kondamori isn't making manga, he is either repairing and making instruments, playing said instruments, Cooking. Or taking pictures of his cat. All right, this is Kaiki Kairu Hime, or the Bizarre Frog Princess from 1994. Um, I'm not gonna go through every page of all of these. I actually did a full flip through of this on my Patreon page. So if you wanna see the whole thing in detail, go to my Patreon, Koenji Sean Reviews, three bucks a month, tons of video content up there and new stuff every week. All right, after, that's my plug. Um, I also, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm kind of reluctant to show because I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube, so I've kind of bookmarked some stuff. But again, it's splatter, shoujo, horror, manga, so it gets wild. Um, so this is about, of course, a cult that they infiltrate. This is the cult run by a mother-daughter combo. And... They infiltrated um, some school kids because one of the school kids has been indoctrinated, indoctrinated, indoctrinated by the cult. Um, they catch one of the dudes, one of the school kids, turn him into a dog, chop off his hands and feet, gouge out his eyes, cut out his tongue, as you do. And they capture a girl. Again, everything is so extreme. It's splatter horror, but all the high school girls and boys are stacked they're all ripped or soup and he's got some sort of a fetish with uh giant foreign white foreign exchange women because these dutch girls are always popping up in his manga and uh of course they're genetically much larger than life comparatively eh, they're dead showering a blood shower dog anyways let's look at some more panels we got four tonko bone to take a look at here so this one is a wild horrific story of a father that impregnates his daughter and then she has a miscarriage and then the miscarriage turns into this beast which gets revenge for by killing her father Ooh. 
And this is a typical scene in Kondomori's work. Torture. Lots and lots of torture. Check out those eyeballs. Ugh. Let's skip to another. I don't know why I bookmarked. What or why I bookmarked. Because I've been working on this for so long. I can't even remember. Oh, this is where she wakes up. And finds a finger in her mouth. At night, she'd been sleepwalking, doing some murder. But again, gag humor. She has her mom or someone tired to the bed so she won't sleepwalk and murder. Floating head. Her head pops off. This guy bats it across the room. It flies across the room. This robber has been in here. He murders the dog. Suddenly. This guy just shows up and cuts off the dog's head. And she ends up as an Inu Ningen. Or a dog person. Wan Wan. I like it when I find these. So this is an ad advert from that time. So we have some Inuki Kaneko here. More Inuki Kaneko. Tanima uh, Yumeji, who I've got a great collection. I actually have this one too. I have a great collection of Tanima stuff, which I'm going to do a full profile on here soon. Ochazuke Nori. See, very different style than standard shoujo. And some other stuff. Those are always cool. And of course, Horror M Comics, as I mentioned before. Oh yeah, this one is autographed by Kanda Mori and signed to maybe Michigusa. That might be the name reading. Not to me. And he signed this in 1998. All right, let's move on to the next Tankobon, which is Mina Goroshi. Not 37564, but Mina Goroshi Gakuen, or the school where everybody dies or everybody is murdered. This was the first one I picked up, and this one also is signed to Tomos I don't know who Tomosesu is, but eh, signed copy. I have two signed copies out of four. That's cool. And everyone does die at this school. It's a Catholic school, of course, but run by this psycho who kills students and dismembers them. Splatter. This was the first one of his that I read, and I, got, I was instantly hooked on Kondo Mori. This one, the soccer player, turns into a soccer psycho. I mean, who would have thought to have a high school girl beheaded and her head replaced with a soccer ball, and then she goes around on a murder spree? She's really good at soccer, so she's good at kicking people in the head. There goes his ding. Ite! Ouch. Yeah, ouch is right. She just pulled off his pants and stabbed him in the ding, man. But later... These two have their legs cut off. Kimi ga kusatteru, or you are rotting. There's some really good panels in these. But she is rotting. I don't know why her underwear says half Japanese, half beast, but I didn't go to high school girl go to high school with girls that look like that. Nor this. So good. And what did I mark in the back here? Oh, this is the 
cursed moth story. So again, splatter horror with lots of like little gags going on in it, wild stuff. Again, released through Horror M. Two more here, and then we will wrap this up. This is Kaiki Mira Shoujo, or The Bizarre Mummy Girl. And, you know, like, so many ideas have been done. Everyone has done, had done something about bugs, or animals, or, in, you know, like, creepy crawlies, lizards, and stuff like that. You can, I have so many in my Hibari collection. And this one has mummies and insects and stuff in it. That's Jama. Wah! He has the top of his head knocked off. There's our mummy girl. I like that the mummy girl twists this girl's head around in a circle. So her head's backwards and pickaxes her to the ground. And then replaces her as the mummy in the ground. Let's see, what else did I bookmark here? Oh, this one's wild too. <laughs> this is the possessed camera. Again, you know, it's horror, but sometimes the gags are just ridiculous. They get this cursed camera that he gives like this couple, this high school couple, and the boy gives the girl for her birthday. It's a cursed Polaroid camera. I think whoever it takes a picture of is killed by it. <laughs> a picture comes out of his mouth. They try to destroy it, but to no avail. It crawls out of the trash and squishes her face. And her face becomes camera parts. And it says, hi, cheese. And here we are getting into the creepy crawlies. This is Imomushi Shoujo Madoka, or Madoka the Maggot Girl. Uh, fun stuff. Um, let's see what I have bookmarked over here. Oh, this is the giant chicken one. Pyo pyo. Everyone loves a giant chicken. Wouldn't that freak you out? You look out your window and there's a giant chicken staring at you. I think this girl was torturing chickens in the chicken coop. You know, schools here, they'll have, they'll raise chickens or rabbits. And those are always the target of ruffians or evil people um this one <laughs> this girl joins the gymnastics team only to be tortured by her teammates and the coach they're making her stretch here but a little bit too much wild and i got one more thing bookmarked here in the back Oh, uh, this is the story of the kid that won't eat his lunch. Uh, gags abound. He's trying to because he has to go to the bathroom, but finally just pisses himself as you do. And then proceeds to vomit in his classmate's face. And then she... Uh, Squishes his sack for that. All right. This is from 1997. And this last one we have here is also from 97. 94, 95, 97, 97. This is Hakaba Kyoshitsu, 
or the graveyard classroom and more worms and creepy crawlies. Um, this is our main protagonist. She is from a long line of ninjas. And this is her hamster friend. So he did finally get a hamster in one of his stories. There she is introducing herself to us from the Iga Ninja lineage. Her name is, I think, Khan Marukul, but we'll just call her Marukul. She throws this evil principal's killing people at the school. She throws some ninja stars in his face. Or he's making zombies? Maybe he's making zombies in this one. God. I've been collecting these over the last two years, so sometimes it's hard to remember. But she's a ninja, so she does things like flying kicks and kicking ass. And she is the main protagonist throughout this story. This is a, the crazy music teacher that is killing people. So she ties up all these students that she captures and she's killing this one with uh, her do, ra, mi, fa, so, la, she. She means die. And then they, he explodes. She's playing some evil piano. Um, this is how she plays the drums. Uh, some music themed murder and it just keeps going and going and going there's a cute hamster though all right what else do i have here a few more bookmarks and then we will wrap this up Wah. Falling on spikes, falling in a trap. This one's sick. <laughs> An airplane flies by and just goes right through the window and stabs her through the back. One of the students. Again, all students. I don't remember how she gets pumped full of... Oh, yeah. She gets force-fed. That dude already had his eye popped out. Until her stomach bloats up. And then she pops. Wild. Doperu Marco. Murder in the classroom, beheading. Remember, this is all geared towards young ladies. More child murder. So I guess you can see why I think Kandamori is the sickest, most vile and funnest horror manga ka from the 1990s thanks to everyone who subs likes and shares you are all awesome you're some of my favorite people in the world and you are the reason why i make these weird videos of weird manga from my collection of now over 1200 volumes so thanks again for that it's so fun to do this stuff um again if you want to see more content and some of the more hardcore stuff not that this isn't hardcore, but unfiltered stuff, come over to my Patreon page, Koenji Sean Reviews. And again, hit that sub button below by you subscribing and hitting that button. It helps me out a lot. If you have any questions about anything, hop a comment down below, and I'll be back with more weird stuff soon. Matane. Oops. I almost forgot to show this. So yes, Kondomori is still making manga. He makes it for an online website, as I mentioned earlier. It is called Kumachan. This is Kumachan Furan Shitai, or the decomposing dead body of, well, Kumachan. And he does one page comics now, anywhere is between one panel and around eight panels. This is a seven panel. Starts off with Hyo. He dies, Uji Uji. The sound of maggots, decomposing, decomposing, decomposing. Fua, 
よく寝た。I had such great sleep. あれ ?What the hell? And this is an original. The originals that he sells online go for between $40 and $60 on average. And then he sells prints for around $15 to $20. I got this one original of Kumachan to show all of you. All right, that's a little bonus here at the end. And I will catch you all again soon. Matane! Thank、you